We've seen what a HQL is and how to use HQL to pull up all the records from a particular table. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a few more ways in which we can configure the results that we get from uh, using HQL. Uh, before we get started, there are a couple of changes that I'd like to make to our uh, code that we wrote in our earlier tutorial. I'm going to use generics and um, this is actually a list of users. So I'll declare it as a list of user details. So what I'm doing here is that uh, I'm getting the values of all the users in the list. And we know for a fact that these are a list of users. So I'm going to, you know, use the list of user details as generic. And uh, I'm going to cast this. Because as far as um, the query.list is concerned, it's just returning a, it's just returning a list. Okay, so now what I'll do here is after I have uh, closed the session, instead of just displaying the count, I'll display all the records. So I'll say for users I'm just gonna print get username it's as simple as that now this would be helpful because of uh, a few things that we're going to look at in this tutorial. We need to understand the data that's getting pulled up. Okay, so now I have, uh, again, I'll just quickly recap what we did in our earlier tutorial. We used a query object to pull up all the records from the user details table. What we did was we mentioned the class name and Hibernate managed to pull up all the data and we also saw how to use a where clause to restrict the data that we get i'm going to remove the where clause for this example and then once we use the query object to um, get the list by using the query.list method then we you know use this uh, we got this user list and uh, we displayed the count now what we're doing is we're displaying the name of each of those users just to make sure everything is right we'll uh, run it once and see that we are getting the list of users, fine. Okay, so now uh, the change that we noted in this kind of uh, query when it compares to uh, a SQL query is that first of all, Hibernate does a lot of work for us. It takes the data that, uh, you know, it's a result of the query and it converts it into entity objects and it hands it over to us. Uh, in a way, it's good because it saves a lot of trouble but then the problem is that you do not have a lot of control for example say you want to have control over what columns get pulled up you don't want to pull up the entire uh, object say for example I just, i'm just interested in the username in this example itself i have i have no need for the user id but hibernate manages to pull that up as well so that's the first thing the second thing is i do not want all the users to be retrieved. I want to I want to do a pagination kind of mode. I want to get the first set of users and then fire another query to get the second set of users and so on. I don't want to get the whole list of users because again, this is going to be a problem if the number of users are huge. You don't want to get all of them at once. So these are the two problems that we're going to address now. The first thing that we're going to look at is pagination. How does Hibernate support pagination? The way Hibernate supports pagination is configuring this uh, query object that we've got over here. So now that I have uh, created the query, now I can configure what is the page that I need from the database. I do that by using the query dot set first result. Now the query dot set first result allows me to set what is the start of my results that I'm interested in? Now, if I, uh, you know, I want to start from say row number five. So I do a query dot set first result five. Now, 
this will make sure that among the data that gets pulled up let's say for example it was a select star from okay and uh, you know you got 10 records so what query.set first result would do is starting from the first record of a select star it would go five results below and then that would be the first result so i can skip the first set of records and i can start my result the one that i'm interested in i can start from any one particular point so that will be the first result for me okay so there is one more uh, there's one more property here called query dot set max results query dot set max results allows me to tell hibernate what is the maximum number of records that it needs to pull up um, for a list query dot list so i can say i need uh, say four records so what happens is hibernate will uh, pull up records and then once it reaches four records it's going to stop there and it's going to return me the list even though there are more records available so essentially what we're doing is we are starting from a particular point which i can configure and we are ending at a particular point which i can configure so this is in essence how you can manage pagination so i can specify the start and end points the start point is by directly mentioning the number of records i mean the the nth record from which I need to get the data and the end point is by specifying the number of records that I need. So it will be this plus this that would be the end. So now let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at what's the data that Hibernate pulls up in this scenario. So now I run this. Started from record 5 since our uh, our list of users is not starting from 0 it's starting from 1 so the first record is user 6. Uh, and then what it has done is it has pulled up four records because we have said the max result is four. So even though there is a user 10, it's not pulling that up. It's stopped at user nine. And note what's happening here. The configuration that we have given has actually affected the select query. So here you can see there is a user detail limit and offset. So these are the two properties that, uh, you know, that is a direct result of our configuration. So whatever configuration you make, it gets translated to the SQL query that Hibernate generates. So you're going to end up with only those records because Hibernate only queries for those records. So this, this makes it a more efficient, first of all, and then you can control the data that you're going to get out of Hibernate. So this is uh, this is the one way you can use pagination. So what what ideally you would do is that you would probably have a method which takes the start point and the end point, or the start point and the the number of results, and uh, whatever you know view you have to configure the the pagination. Maybe you have a drop down for number of results per page that would probably go to the you know set max results, and uh, you probably have a page by page view with the next and a previous, and each page would decide what the first result is so this makes it very simple for you to implement pagination in uh, you know in either as a web page or as a simple java application as long as you had you've written a method which takes these two parameters and then you, you can dynamically get the right page by passing the right parameters okay so now pagination is done now we'll look at another option uh, another uh, configuration that we can do uh, earlier i told you that uh, if you do a create query it's going to pull up the entire record. So when I'm saying from user details, each object that it gets pulled up has all the values populated in it. Now I have in my user details, I have user ID and username. So in this list, this list that I get here, the username and the user ID is populated. Of course, uh, we've already seen lazy loading. So if the, you know, if the property happens to be a list or a collection or something like that, then Hibernate does do lazy loading. And unless you access a getter, it's not going to load from the database. But let's say all our data are, uh, you know, first level data. It, uh, I, have, I, have a I don't have any lists here, but I have a huge number of uh, member variables here. And uh, the problem here is that I'm not interested in all of those member variables. Say this is all I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to print the user names. And now if my user object has 10 member variables, there's really no point in pulling up all the 10 member variables. You would want to configure Hibernate to pull up only the username. So you can do that by actually writing the whole select query. So here earlier we had written just a from user details. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write select and 
the I, instead of the column name, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the the member variable name again. So this is no way different from what we had done earlier. So it's it's in it's all in the object paradigm. So I'm going to say select member variable name from class name. So what it's going to do is it's going to end up with just this name. It's going to give me a list of names. It's as simple as that. But there is one thing that you need to note. Um, I'm doing a select name from user detail. So I'm just selecting one field. I'm just selecting one value. So it's going to be a list of a single value. So what changes here is that the list that um, Hibernate is going to give me here, it's not going to be a list of user details. It's going to be a list of a string because I'm just pulling up one value and that value happens to be a string. So instead of giving me a list of objects this time, since I'm just pulling up the username, it's going to give me a list of usernames. And since username happens to be a string, it's going to give me a list of strings. So if I run this now, it, it's going to show me an error. So let me save and run this. So there you see, it's giving me a class cast exception because this list is cannot be cast into a list of user details. It's actually a list of strings. So let's change this part of the code. So what I'll do is instead of uh, having a list of user details, I'm going to have a list of strings. So I'll say list string usernames equals query dot list. I'm casting it to a list of strings. So this will be user names and this will be a string. So now what I can do is in my uh, system dot out dot print, I can directly print you because you happens to be a string. So let me save and run this. Well, there you go. I'm able to pull up the names and the advantage here is that I am limiting the data that Hibernate pulls up only to the record that I'm only to the field that I'm interested in. I don't want to pull up, pull up the whole object. I have more than one um, field here. So let's say I, I enter select user ID comma username from user details. Then what would happen is Hibernate would return me a list of lists. So each member of the first level list is going to be a list of two strings, which is the user ID and the username. So you can enter any number of column uh, names or the field names you want, and it's all going to be added to a list. Uh, there are a few other ways we can configure this. I'm not going, going to go into the detail, but uh, I'd recommend you try them out. Uh, I can say select new map of you know user ID comma username, in which case I get a list of map objects. So that it's, it's going to return me a list and each member of that list is going to be a map and the map is for the user ID and the username. So these kind of configurations are possible. You can control what is the object that you get in the list. It's going to end up in a list anyway. So the first level is going to be a list, but you can configure what each member of the list is going to be. So uh, before we wind up, there's one last thing I'd like to mention here. Uh, the, the few other things that you can do in a normal select will still apply here. So I can say a select max of user ID. So uh, all the aggregation functions like max, sum, all those things will still work. So Hibernate is going to return me only one value here. So it's just going to get one value and I can print that. Of course, I'll have to change this. So I'm not going to go into the details. It's going to return me a list with a single integer and the integer is going to be this maximum user ID. So you can, you can probably try out all these things with the select. Um, most of the features that uh, a SQL select has will translate well to the select of HQL. The only thing you need to note is that instead of using a column name, you will have to use the property name of the class that you're trying to pull up.